from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is Trains and Railroads. This is episode 15, segment one. In episode 14, we left Seattle heading south on Amtrak's Coast Starlight. Our journey took us to Oregon's biggest city, Portland. This clock tower give, gives Portland's Union Station a distinct appearance. Built in 1896, the station once served the Union Pacific, the Great Northern, the Burlington Northern, and Southern Pacific Railroads. Today, it serves Amtrak for the Empire Builder, the Cascades, and the Coast Starlight, which we can see in the station. We'll learn more about this most scenic of trains, but first, let's take a ride from Eugene for part two of our southbound journey. Eugene's Amtrak station is a comfortable place to await the Coast Starlight. Aboard the train, we pass unremarkable neighborhoods as the train heads east to cross the Cascade Mountains. Eugene and Sister City Springfield make up the third most populous metro area in Oregon. Eugene was once known as the lumber capital of the U.S. Today its fame comes from fast runners and the shoes they wear. Eugene is home of the Oregon Ducks. It's an active community made possible by lots of green spaces, including this trail-laced park along the Willamette River. Two important rivers come together at Eugene, the Mackenzie River, a fast-moving wild river popular with rafters, and the Willamette River. Here, the water from the Mackenzie becomes part of the Willamette, a river that grows as it winds its way northward to the Columbia. Oh, we're getting closer and closer to the river. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. It's pretty darn full. There's a U of O stadium. Willamette River, running high. Any higher would be in a boat. All right, folks, I'm ready now. 515, those of you holding up, 515, dinner reservation, please make your way to the dining car. As always, step just inside the vestibule doors and allow a uniform staff member to seat you, please. 515, dinner reservation. Also, folks, on that note, you now notice that I'm a little bit behind. So please wait for me to call your time. Don't proceed to the dining car until your time is called. If I can make up some time, I'll try to make up some time and get us back on track. If not, we'll just keep on rolling throughout the night. Thank you. What do you want to do? Yeah, I'm going to buy one of those. The Oregon countryside. We have not gone far. Huh? I'm not going far. We cross the Willamette River here, and we're soon seeing the Lookout Point Reservoir. The scenery was enchanting, but we were also losing daylight. Soon, darkness would fall. Hey. hey. We're looking at the ships. 
those ships are surplus warcraft, mostly from World War II. They've been moored here since the end of the war, just in case we need them again. They're called the Mothball Fleet. They look a little bit ghostly sitting out there in the gray water. We're past Sacramento. After a brief stop in Martinez, we continue southbound, watching the urban landscape from the parlor car. This is the parlor car. It's a nice thing. You have to pack it in and begin to be interior. So that would account for it. And this is Liz. This is the foot of the Bay Bridge uh, going into San Francisco. This must be where they take the containers off the ships and put them on railroad cars. And look at all those big old cranes. I bet that's what they do with those. Look at all the containers. This is Jack London Square, and it's really been developed a lot over the years. Nice place to come to, if you can get through the neighborhoods to get here. Sea salt, anyone? This is where Morton gets its salt from the seawater. You can see the white product being piled up here after settling out in these evaporation ponds. The color is from an algae that apparently likes very salty water. The Spanish word for salt is sal, and we rolled through the Salinas Valley, America's salad bowl. A lot of produce is grown here. Writer John Steinbeck grew up in this agricultural area. This is a trail that goes right along the railroad tracks. Not far from Salinas, we skirt the edge of Elkhorn Slough, an estuary set aside for wildlife. We visited the slough in 2009, seeing sea otters, seals, sea lions, and many other animals. Robles is the Spanish word for oak trees. As we ease through Paso Robles, the pass, not the town, enjoy the quiet, accented with train whistles. We'll see you again in part three. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Eugene's Amtrak we'll station learn about is a comfortable place. We'll Coast Starlight when we return. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. After American Railroad's golden age, thousands of miles of track were abandoned. Rather than see these valuable transportation corridors disappear, an organization called Rails to Trails turns them into trails for bicycling, hiking, and sometimes horseback riding. Members get to see good work that's being done by enjoying the organization's magazine. Each issue features rail trails throughout the country, as well as maps that can help them enjoy them. There are always interesting features like this one on railroad trestles. If you want to receive the magazine, you must become a member. I bought my first copy from a group that supports libraries, but I soon became a member myself to support their important work. Millions of people are enjoying healthy lives by getting outside and using these trails. And if you need something to feel good about, you can always enjoy a Rails to Trails magazine. You can contact Rails to Trails at railstotrails.org. You may never get to drive a train, but you can enjoy hiking and biking where the trains used to pass. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts.